Halima B and her family have a small sugarcane farm on the island of Vanua Levu in Fiji. Before, they lived in a small rundown house and struggled to make ends meet. By 2009, the special prices Fiji had been receiving for its sugarcane dropped by 36% and Halima's small sugarcane crop lost much of its value. A year later, her husband was paralyzed by a stroke. This left only Halima and her daughter to make money for their family. <laughs> An ambitious project by the European Union provided some relief for the family. Working through Habitat for Humanity Fiji, a local NGO, EU funds helped build a new home for Halima and her family. Through another EU-funded project, Halima also obtained some training to carry on sugarcane farming in a more efficient way. Today, Halima and her family have a brighter future as well as a new home. The sugarcane industry is vital to Fiji's economy. Sugar is by far the biggest earner amongst the country's domestic exports. Nearly one quarter of the country's population relies either directly or indirectly on sugar. For many years, Fiji exported the bulk of its raw sugar to the European Union and received preferential rates as a form of assistance. But in 2006, the World Trade Organization ruled that commodities like sugarcane could not be given preferential access to European markets. By 2017, all price subsidies and quota mechanisms have to be removed by the EU. In Fiji, this will have a huge effect on the sugarcane industry and those who rely on it. So the market's going to be tougher, the market's going to be more competitive. So the big challenge for Fiji sugar is really to become more competitive on the international market and that's something that we're, we're very keen to uh, help the, uh, the sugar industry and the Fiji government uh, work on in the you know, time that remains until 2017. The EU developed a far-reaching assistance project in 2009 that would help address some of the issues faced by Fiji's sugarcane industry. The project is called the Accompanying Measures for the Sugar Protocol Program, or AMSP for short. The project has four basic components. Social mitigation, improvement of key services for agriculture program, alternative livelihood program, and support to the sugar industry program. It's uh, really our aim by working with those who, who, who work uh, in, in sugar to help uh, alleviate some of the challenges that, uh, that they have in, uh, in making a, a, a decent living. Uh, we're, we're, we're working to ensure that the industry really can get the most economic benefit out of the European market uh, that, it, uh, that it possibly can. And uh, we're, we're working to help uh, those who farm in the sugar belt to, for example, diversify their products so that they can have uh, additional sources of, uh, of income. Getting to um, business of the day, I understand this is the uh, first uh, meeting the of... The AMSB uh, program is delivered through non-government organizations, training institutions, international organizations, and in association with relevant government departments. Coordination for these many partners is done by the AMSP Coordination Unit in Lautoka. We are contracted to run the EU's Programme Coordination Unit and the Coordination Unit 
supervises the contracts, uh, manages the, the, the projects from the EU side together with the task manager in the delegation. Well, altogether there are about 15 projects in the programme and eight implementing agencies, so we have a number of agencies, we have a lot of different people as you've indicated. As part of its social mitigation component, the AMSB programme helps provide a social safety net in Fiji's sugarcane belt by helping people who are living on the fringes of poverty to develop the ability to supplement their income from sugar. One NGO that has been contracted to implement some of the EU's social mitigation work is FRIEND, the Foundation for Rural Integrated Enterprises and Development. FRIEND uh, is a socio-economic empowerment organisation, so we work with individuals and communities to get them to believe in themselves first, look at skills and resources around them uh, to evolve livelihoods. We were able to provide vocational training in a whole range of things from UFB, uh, cash crop food processing, but we were also able to utilise their funds in actually setting up people. So the European Union funded each one of these components and it really worked well uh, with the skills that we had. Berendani Salaiwai lives on a cane farm in Seanganga on Vanua Levu Island. When her husband died, Berendani and her son had to run the cane farm and try to cope with their needs after the price they were getting for sugar dropped. Friend assisted Merindani by giving her ducklings to raise and provided her with fencing and advice on how to run a poultry business. The ducks are sold in her area for meat. Friend also has a youth training program, which is an innovative, income generating program. Percentage of unemployed youth in Fiji is very high, especially within the cane growing areas. The training program works with tutors from the University of the South Pacific who train youth up to certificate level. These youth then go on a work attachment with various businesses in the area. Kasanita Laulau was one of these youths. From the beginning I don't know anything about customer service. All I know customer can buy and then I get. That's when I come to YEM program I learn a lot. Young people like Asanita have not been able to find employment in Fiji's changing sugarcane industry. Through Friends Youth Training Program, Kasanita was trained how to do simple office work, how to organize her time, and basic bookkeeping work. Kasanita was given a work attachment at a service station in Rakiraki Town. As with many of the training participants, the work attachment led to a full-time job with the service station, providing much-needed income for her family. We work in the six days, we take our wages. I used to buy the groceries and I take it home. Sometimes whenever they ask for the money, I give it to them, so it helps. 
Another participant in the youth program was Bhavna. Bhavna applied to the program and received assistance in setting up a beekeeping operation at their farm. Bhavna received training and was provided with bees and all the equipment she would need in her new venture. She and her husband both look after the hives and get four harvests of honey a year. Their income from honey supplements what her husband makes cutting cane and doing odd jobs. It helps in my living standard. It helps in my uh, children's education, in my uh, house welfare. That's it. I want to want make more of my business, expand my business, but buying more of bee boxes. From this money, I want to buy all more boxes, one, two boxes at a time, so I can expand my business. The honey from Bhavna's beekeeping is sold to Friend Fiji and other buyers. Friend has a packaging plant where the honey is bottled, labelled and then marketed to store throughout Fiji. 80% of those trained in Friend's training program were still in employment six months after completing their training. It's about socially empowering people to be able to take control of their lives, be able to develop economic livelihoods and ensuring a sustained livelihood and that only happens when the market is well developed. The Ramakrishna Mission or RKM has also been providing technical vocational education and training with EU funding. The mission provides practical training courses in automotive mechanics, computer skills, farming training and hotel industry catering at its training center near Nandi. The training helps provide alternative livelihoods for young people who find it increasingly difficult to get employment in the sugar industry. One graduate of the RKM program is Anushil Sharma. Following his training, Anushil went on a six-month training attachment at Car Care Center in Nandi. The garage later hired him as a permanent employee. In school we learned all the, all the sizes, uh, spanner, the name of the spanner, so it became easier for me from there to be in the garage. If somebody asked me any tools, I just go pick from the toolbox, just bring it. That makes the job a bit easy by having a training in school. We don't have to teach them a lot about the electronics and all other things. Because they learn over there and that's good to us. Whatever they learn here, they have a good application on it. And like whatever they learn, they apply here. In a very tight labor market, Anushil was able to get a long-term job in a field where he had a lot of interest. Really important to me because in this nowadays it's very hard to find jobs. Uh, so I was lucky. I got. I studied at the same time. I worked. I got experience. All these wages, I just take it to home, just share with the family in food stuff, electricity bills, water bills. So it helps a lot. Kaushal Naidu had always helped his family on their sugarcane farm, but his dream was to become a chef. RKM gave him that opportunity to pursue his dream and still help his family. Chef, like I'm like that, I'm just as ऐसे मैं काका भी शेफ रहा तो दिखता रहा ना लाइक करता रहा अच्छा लगे मैं शेफ ना इसमें भी गुड वेजेस भी है। After an attachment of three months, the Sheraton Hotel offered Kaushal a full-time job in their kitchen. बहुत रकम की चीज़ सीखा ना लाइक टाइमिंग और डिफरेंट कट्स ऑफ मीट और Another activity under the EU's social mitigation project has been providing the most needy with proper homes. The NGO that was engaged to implement this component was Habitat for Humanity Fiji. 
Through the EU project, Habitat provided new homes and improvements on existing homes for around 400 families who are or were associated with the sugarcane industry. But these homes also required some contribution from the recipient. With the European Union project, there was a contribution that was required from the, the homeowners, from the communities, from the recipients. Um, and what that helped do was create some ownership within the, within the project with, with the, the assistance that was given. The reason why we, we want families to contribute and communities to contribute so that they understand the value of the asset they have, the, the assistance that's been given, and that, that they can take care of it so that it lasts a long time with them. Apart from Halima Bees and other new homes in Lambasa, Habitat also built new houses for the poorest people in communities within the sugarcane belt on Viti Levu, including at Koroipita. With uh, the homes that were built in Koroipita, we built 22 homes in 15 days. And this was with the assistance of uh, around 130 odd volunteers from five different countries, uh, US, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, and Fiji. Losalini Andi Tumbuna stays in one of the first homes built in Kuroipita. Her husband worked as a cane cutter, but only had regular work during the harvest season. Before getting this assistance, she and her family were struggling. Like before, where I was staying, my husband is just owing $80 a week and my rent is $180 a month, which sometimes, like, it uh, covers two weeks for us to buy our groceries and I got three children. With the EU assistance, Losalini and her family were able to move from their tiny one-room house into their new home in Kuroipita. What I notice when I go through these 14 houses built by the EU, the house they build is suitable for the family. Like, um, I didn't have a photo of the house which I stayed before. If you guys will see, it's, it's more and more, I, I think it's four times or five times, that small room worth the $180 a month, uh, it's different from this one whole house which got the, the house built by the EU and the washroom is separated from the, from the bathroom and we got a nice kitchen and well, the house is suitable for a family to stay in, to live in. Another NGO implementing the EU's social mitigation component is Empower Pacific. This NGO operates a rural credit scheme with funding from the EU. Dinesh Kumar had been a sugarcane farmer but could not make enough money due to the poor soil quality on his farm. Upon the death of his father, Dinesh began making concrete wash tubs. Through Empower Pacific, Dinesh was provided with a loan and training in business management. They gave me good advice. Dinesh sells his wash tubs to several large hardware stores and private individuals. Vadiseva Raikondre's husband was casually employed as a cane cutter, as were many young men in their area. When the amount of work reduced, he found himself out of work and the family faced big challenges. Vadiseva tried selling produce in the market to help, but she eventually received assistance from Empower Pacific to start her own business. She received a small business loan and some initial training. Urdu 
Vavi Seva sells tie-dye outfits and printed cloth to many businesses in the Nandi area. Business yengo, eu rezanga ne lavu na vesima. Every day I get the money. Vebu kita langa pe na soni ni to rent, na soni ni to libu liba, kena kito kaka. Ya seranga na bu na umaro chui kena na. Support to help redevelop Fiji's sugar industry required assistance at many levels and across several sectors. One of the areas of assistance was through fair trade accreditation. Fair trade contributes to sustainable development by offering better trading conditions, especially for marginalized producers and workers, such as those affected by the EU sugar reform. Fair trade is a international accreditation system. The farmers need to be compliant to fair trade standards, and it's a whole list of standards which uh, tells them uh, how to comply with best agricultural practices, environmental uh, compliance, as well as uh, labor compliance and democratic uh, uh, governance compliance. One of the activities we had to do first was looking after our health, especially the child labor. In Fiji, people were using small kids for walking, so fair trade has stopped all that. The weedy side, we were spraying paracord. Fair trade has stopped. The EU assisted Fiji cane farmers by helping them get organized and registered as small producer organizations. The EU then trained them how to abide by fair trade standards in order for their crop to be sold under the fair trade label in Europe. The EU also provided support to farmer advisory services through selected lead farmers. Each of these lead farmers in turn trained other farmers within their communities on agricultural best practices and improving unit yield and production. So all cane farmers are members of a certified uh, cane producer association and all associations receive direct benefits uh, from premiums. And uh, they have got the democratic decision of using that money in the fairest possible way to benefit farmers in the communities at large. Whole of Fiji, this is the first feed farmer school that we have established in the Wangili sector today. Decisions on how the monies earned by the associations is spent is made collectively by the farmers themselves. Usually they channel these funds into community projects so that many in the community benefit. In Lambasa, these projects have included developing a kindergarten, building bus stops, a bridge, and many other community projects. People in Lombasa are really enjoying the benefits of fair trade, especially on schools, on their uh, school uh, yeah, environment, their building structure, fair trade is helping. To help improve Fiji's efficiency in producing sugar, the EU also supported the work of the Sugar Research Institute of Fiji. EU support helped fund research on the development of different cane varieties that produce a higher yield of sugar. The Institute operates demonstration fields that test the cane varieties' suitability to Fiji's climate and soils to improve the cane's sugar content. The EU also provided funds to send Jainesh Ram, a senior researcher at the Institute, overseas to obtain advanced qualifications. This is a great opportunity that I'm getting funding from EU. And yes, everything we provided, my fees, and I was happy that I was uh, going abroad to get a qualification. 
Jainesh is now involved in several projects to reduce sugarcane pests and to optimize the use of fertilizers. We try to re uh, reduce the pest of sh uh, sugarcane using the pheromone. And that's the other project. The other project is uh, using the nitrogen fixing bacteria, uh, Azectobacter species, uh, that will reduce the cost of uh, fertilizer. So instead of fertilizer, we can use the bacteria to grow the plant very well. The research done by the Institute will help Fiji's cane industry produce better quality of cane, reduce pests, and reduce the cost for growing the cane, which will increase profit margins for farmers. The EU's support to Fiji's sugar industry has targeted many sectors at many different levels. Hillside erosion has been an issue for cane farmers in Fiji for many years, with heavy rains washing soil down from hilltops and ruining sugarcane crops. The EU initiated an ambitious reforestation project in collaboration with the Secretariat for the Pacific Community, or SPC. This project will ultimately plant 6,000 hectares of various tree species to protect against soil erosion and to generate revenue. So it's conserving the, the soil on the top areas and, uh, and I think that is uh, uh, one of the, the benefits that we have uh, uh, on the long term uh, process uh, uh, stopping soil erosion and uh, other things from the hills. Eh? Apart from stemming the topsoil erosion from the hills, the trees planted will themselves be harvested in another 10 to 15 years, providing the landowners with additional sources of revenue. Because uh, of what they've done now, uh, it's really changed our mindset uh, on uh, how we do agriculture in uh, Fiji. Uh, mainly we never think of uh, trees to be a plant together with agriculture crops. Eh? But I think with uh, assistance from the European Union, it uh, just opened up uh, uh, areas that we never ever discovered before. The improvement of key services for agriculture program is another component of the EU support. This component seeks to help farmers better utilize the land they have available and to supplement the growing of sugarcane with other cash crops. Farmers like Morbin Khan have faced severe erosion of their soil. With the EU's assistance through the SPC's IKSA project, Khan and other farmers were trained in contour farming and growing alternative crops to protect the soil from erosion as well as provide other cash crops. What I was before and today, I saw in my farm, I am going up and more things I have been upgrading in my farm. In the, in the short period, I have been improving more pineapple, more vegetables and some more lands I have got, already bought. To assist farmers introduce these cash crops, Demonstration nurseries were set up through the EU project that provided farmers with good quality seedlings to start new cash crops. There has been a lot of benefits and also it has been benefited other farmers when the farmers come here for workshop or training through either SPC or ICSA themselves which of course is assisted by European Union. It has definitely assisted us into our livelihood, uh, made our living, uh, as we say, for the necessities of life. Through SBC's ITC project funded by the EU, some lead farmers like Don Bruce are being assisted in raising livestock as a supplement to farming sugarcane. Part of that assistance was in introducing a faster growing, more resilient grass for the livestock to feed on. So that, that's going to be another benefit for us. It, uh, it grows faster, less, less uh, time frame uh, to, get, to get our meat production, you know. 
and the quality of meat is uh, going to be much better because of the pasture and uh, the mixture of uh, whatever they, they're going to be planting in there. Don Bruce's farm will be used as a model farm for other farmers to see firsthand how better techniques increase the viability of livestock for income generation. It looks really good showing that the pastures and uh, the way they planted the vai vai, which will improve our, our, the growth of our animal and um, the quality of our meat. More productive use of available land, the introduction of supplementary crops and even raising livestock is all part of the EU's plan to provide long-term solution for Fiji's struggling cane farmers. A key component in the EU project is its support for the sugar industry program. Part of this support is to assist in the improvement of roads used to transport sugarcane to the country's mills. Years of neglect have left many roads in the sugarcane areas degraded and prone to flooding in rainy weather. At the moment, a lot of people are finding it hard to, uh, to get their uh, cane into the, to the mill because of the conditions of the road. Uh, a lot of roads are, are unusable during wet weather and uh, there had been a lot of slips during some of the heavy rain downpours because of inadequate drainage systems. Through the SPC Microprojects Program, which is funded by the EU, transport systems such as bridges and walkways, as well as electrical power and water supply to cane farmers, have been targeted as a need to improve both transport and living standards in the cane areas. Hopefully, uh, at the end of the three-year project, that the livelihoods of cane farmers, uh, the most vulnerable, everyone that depend on the sugar industry will be improved, particularly in the area of health and hygiene, in terms of water supply, basic uh, access to, to electricity, improvements to roads and educational facilities, and alternative livelihoods in terms of income or profit that they get from income generating activities. Another part of the EU's support of the sugar industry is a joint collaboration with the Australian Pacific Technical College or APTC through Australian aid to provide training. Do we all have projects? Start time, finish time? Under this program, farmers and staff of Fiji's various sugar mills are upskilled on better operational techniques. This training is designed to improve efficiency in the country's sugar mills. It is also designed to enable farmers to be more efficient and get more sugar content per acre. Since we, are, we, we, we came through the technical uh, field, or we have been groomed through only on a specialized technical fields. Uh, we don't have the required competencies or the appropriate competencies to lead teams or to lead in a corporate department. The training with APTC is a good example of how the AMSP project has sought out key partnerships with relevant organizations to ensure the sustainability of the work begun by the EU. By the end of the project, APTC will have trained an additional 1,500 people, all of whom will achieve Australian qualifications. This training is an international standard to come up and reach the standards that is required, not only here in Fiji, not only by successful business in, uh, businesses in Fiji, but also in the global business out there that we are competing with. Halima B and her family have a small sugarcane farm on the island of Vanua Levu in Fiji. Before they lived, substantial progress had also been made on the remaining activities which were due to be completed by 2018. 15,000 farmers uh, will have taken part in, in various activities organised by, uh, by the programme. And those, those are really the, the direct beneficiary, those are those who because of the uh, support provided by the program, by the European Union, 
will have uh, increased their income, they'll have increased the competitiveness uh, with regards to the way in which they, uh, they produce sugar, they'll have benefited from, uh, for example, the fair trade um, program which uh, enables farmers to benefit from higher prices for their sugar on the European market. So there are a number of ways in which the, these target uh, people will, will benefit from the European Union support. Fiji's government is encouraged by the EU's commitment to further assisting the country's sugarcane industry. We would like it to be in areas which I mentioned uh, earlier, to, to look at uh, how best we can continue to expand this industry, uh, how best we can continue to bring the cost down, how best we can continue to keep it viable so that uh, the, the options for livelihood opportunities for those people living in the rural areas remain intact. Uh, so any assistance which uh, EU will provide uh, towards this will embrace it fully and, and move with it. Many lives have been touched through the EU AMSP program. Many more lives will continue to be touched through ongoing activities. Homes have been built for the poor. Training has been provided to give people employment. Loans have been provided for people to start small businesses. Schools and organizations have been established. Youth have received training and placements to start new careers. Trees have been planted to protect sugarcane fields. And Fiji's sugarcane industry has received substantial support in its rejuvenation efforts. This support has been provided through a cane replanting program, rehabilitation of research and extension work, fair trade, training and capacity building, strategic support, and will soon be provided in the improvement of roads and drainage and for harvest and transportation. The widespread effects of EU assistance run deep in the sugarcane belt areas of Fiji. These effects will continue to be felt for many years.